So here are the parts that we're gonna be using for the brake job on the Toyota Camry. And because this is a job that kind of came up unexpectedly, uh, we didn't have time to order parts like I normally would. So I had to go and buy some parts at the local auto parts store. In this case, normally when I go to locally, I go to Napa, but again, in, due to urgency, we're gonna go uh, with the Duralast. So this is something you can buy uh, at AutoZone. Uh, and I got the, not the base model of the, of the rotor. I got the next up, uh, next, next level up, which will be the Duralast Goal uh, rotor. And it has a cool little NASCAR logo here. I'm not sure really, besides looking cool, what, what, what exactly does NASCAR bring to this? Um, but this is the 44581 for the 2007 Camry. Nothing too crazy. This is not for a performance car. This is just for normal driving, okay? And what it also has, a baggie with all brand new hardware. I always like to change all the hardware every time I do a brake job. So that's pretty good that they include that. It comes with a little baggie of grease too. That's also nice on this. I mean, you don't have the grease laying around, so it's, it's nice that they include that. Here's the brake pads. And now these are the brake pads for the rear of the Camry. So they are a little bit smaller than you will typically get them for the ones that come in the front. They have a little M on there, not, sh not sure really what's up with that, and besides maybe just being max. Um, and there's some numbers on here. This is the DGC 1212 model. And they have a rubber padding on the back. The rubber padding on the back is supposed to help with vibration or any noise. So these are supposed to be really quiet, not only in terms of how they function in the front against the rotor, but on the back on how they interface with the caliper. But I mean, how can you really tell unless you compare back to back brake pads? I'm not really sure. And the cost difference between this to the gold ones is about 12, 12 bucks. So it's not a lot, I think it's worth it. The, the rear brakes last a long time in a car. So when's the next time you're gonna change them? So might as well put in basically the best that you can within the time frame <laughs> that you're given. If I had a little bit more time, I would have ordered parts online like I mostly uh, do for my car. So let's go to the Camry and let's get this thing uh, set, all set up with the brand new brakes. First, the brake caliper is removed. The brake caliper is held by two 14 millimeter bolts. With the brake caliper removed, I can now remove the old brake pads. Before I go any further, I like to secure the brake caliper out of the way using my famous bungee cords. Now it's time to remove the brake caliper bracket. This is also held in place by two 14mm bolts. Alright, time to remove the bracket. Now it's time to remove the disc. If the discs were to get stuck, all I would have to do is put one bolt on each one of these holes, turn the bolts, and I will press the disc out, freeing it from the hub. Now I like to clean this area to make sure it's nice and free of rust or imperfections that will prevent the new disc from sitting completely flat. I just simply use a wire brush or any other kind of sanding paper. Ah, nice and clean. Time to install the new brake disc. Ah, look how shiny it is. Fits like a glove. Alright, before I put the bracket in, I have to make sure that the hardware is also taken care of. Yes, I can clean the hardware, but it is usually faster just to buy new hardware. These brakes actually came with the hardware, so I removed the old hardware and I installed the new hardware in place. Once the hardware is locked in place, all I have to do is lubricate. And the idea of the lubrication is that I place it on all the areas where the metal will rub against metal, so this will provide with a squeaky free or noise free installation as the brakes are allowed to move freely within the brake caliper. Alright, time to carefully reinstall the bracket back into place. I always like putting in bolts by hand first before I use any kind of tools, just to make sure I'm not going to cross thread anything. Hmm. 
Alright, time to tighten these bad boys. And finally, it is always good to torque to factory specification. That feels pretty good. Okay, time to install the brake pads. I'm gonna apply a little bit of lubrication to the top of the brake pad as it's gonna ride directly on the metal. On the bottom portion of the brake pad is gonna take some hardware. The orientation of this hardware is important. Note that I put it in the right orientation. This hardware rides on the bottom portion of the brake pad. Notice that there is no hardware on the top portion. Now, time to slide this guy in. There you go. The same is done with the opposing side. After applying some lubrication to the top and applying the hardware on the bottom, I can now put the brake pad into its location. Almost, there you go. Okay, time to install the brake caliper. Notice that I cannot install the brake caliper right away. That is because the piston has come out because the brake pads were getting thinner. So I have to push the piston back into its location. Now I do this very carefully with the tool that specializes for pushing the piston back into place. The key to doing this is I open up the reservoir container of the brake fluid, just to avoid uh, popping anything or breaking anything. And sometimes it is required to drain a little bit of the fluid out of the container reservoir. If I just push this in and the container is already filled to the top, I will probably spill fluid outside of the reservoir. Notice that I go very slowly on the tool, so I am not forcing the liquid at any kind of a fast rate. It has to be a nice steady rate. There you go. Now it's fully pressed in. Notice how much space I have now. Massive difference. Now, this should slide nice and easy, and yep, super, super easy, a lot of space. Time to put these bolts back in. Again, I always start the bolts by hand, just to make sure I don't cross thread anything. There we go. One more. Okay, time to tighten the bolts down. It is now time to torque the bolts to factory specification. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing for more videos like this. And thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.